in something that can kill a lively party. There's been a mass die-off of sea turtles in Guerrero, which is on the Pacific side of Mexico. Mass death of sea turtles near Acapulco. An interagency group of environmentalists investigates the mass death of black turtles. In recent days have been found dead on the coast beach. They have been gathering evidence, analyzing the bodies, the lifeless bodies, and sampling the environment. These two species of turtles are considered by Rule 59 by the Ministry of Environment are as critically endangered. In the case of Guerrero, indicated that there has been the emergence of more than 200 dead turtles. The death of the turtles even belonging to two species that are considered at high risk of extinction. The death of the marine Aviaparius could be because species of jellyfish known as Maximus salpa. There is already a general alert for conservations and right now they have been holding meetings in Mexico's turtle center. They are already coordinating investigations and are taking samples of some dead turtles. They have also been drawing blood to know scientific and real versions of what's going on, he explained. In previous years, there has been a sea turtle mortality based on black or brown on the beaches of Costa Grande and was suspected of taking these same jellyfish. The three species have been considered in danger of extinction. In Hong Kong Providence, there has been a massive die-off of fish farms. Hundreds of millions of dollars of fish farms have been wiped out in Hong Kong. Unprecedented disaster for Hong Kong fish farmers. Deadly red tide, becoming the dominant species in the Pacific apparently, kills 36 tons of fish. Thousands of dead fish have been found in the Xing Mu. A surge in a rare but harmful species of fish killing red tide has devastated stocks in Hong Kong waters this winter and what is described as an unprecedented disaster for fish farmers. Virtually all reports of the algae bloom involved, both of which are harmful to fish, the Carini papalonokia or the Carinja mikimoterio, a proven killer due to its effects on the gill tissues of fish and their breathing systems. A post review of statistics on the Agricultural Fisheries and Conservation Department's of Red Tide database indicate that most red tide reports were concentrated around the Tolu Harbor and Long Harbor in the Eastern New Territories. The red tides have been linked to a massive fish kill in the area since late December. More than 36 tons of fish have died in the maricultural zones. One expert said the harmful algae could have been transferred to the city by marine vessels. Red tides or algae blooms are areas of seawater discolored brown, pink, or red by large concentrations of microorganisms that may deplete levels of dissolved oxygen. Sightings are usually peak in the spring. While there were more reports of red tides in the same period of 2014 and 15, distribution was more or less evenly spread. The situation has been serious enough to prompt the government to launch an emergency relief fund for multiculturalists affected. I've lost about four tons of fish so far, said Yun Tong TC, farmer Lee Mung Kang, one of 222 advocates to fund so far. Yesterday I looked and I had two fish left. The vice chairman of the New Territory Fishermen Fraternity Association said the scale and severity of the fish deaths was unlike anything he's ever seen. It's an unprecedented and unnatural disaster, he said. The issue isn't about the dead fish now. It's about fish farms closing. Chan estimated the multicultural industry has suffered losses of more than 100 million in just a month. An ecotoxologist at the Hong Kong Institute of Education, Professor Rudolf Wu Sheng Song, said it was hard to explain why the harmful algae blooms were forming this year, where red tides were formed under precise conditions. Variables include the ratio of nitrates and phosphates commonly found in wastewater and seat temperature. An expert in aquatic toxicology at Chinese University, Professor Chang King Ming said it was possible the species may have been transferred to the Tolo area by marine vessels. <coughs> a former lawmaker for the fisheries sector said the mass death began a few weeks after a massive bluish-green discharge was found in the Xingmu. 
He believed there was a link between the two events. Since November, there have been multiple reports of dead fish, but the government has ruled out any connection between pollution and red tide. Food and Health Chief Dr. Wong Meng said red tides were a natural phenomenon and there were no measures to prevent the occurrence of spread. He did, however, agree that there was room for red tide alert and monitoring me mechanisms to be improved. The Environmental Protection Department said it would keep up surveillance of plectonic algae. Previous tests have found no toxic algae or specific sources in the watercourse. The Agricultural Fisheries and Conservation Department said it would step up real-time monitoring of water quality at all 26 fish cultural zones. Thousands of dead fish are washing up on Fiji beaches. This is of February 11th of 2016. There's a warning that extreme temperatures are causing fish to die from heat stress. With thousands washing up on beaches in several countries across the Pacific, photos of dead fish have been shared on social media in Fiji and Vanuatu in recent days. Victor Bonito is a marine ecologist working in Fiji, where he runs the conservation group Reef Explorer. He's been trying to keep count of just how many fish have perished. Oyster disease, palms, confirmed at second Tasmanian location 30 kilometers from the first die-off a case of Pacific oyster mortality syndrome called POMS has been confirmed in a second oyster growing region in southern Tasmania oysters Tasmania which represented growers said the disease was confirmed at pipe clay lagoon southeast of Horbet the deadly oyster disease was first found in ironstone oysters Iowa pit water less than 30 kilometers away it killed 2.5 million oysters at the least neighboring growers in Iowa pit Ware also reported high mortalities and they are also being treated as poems poems known as Pacific oyster mortality syndrome how open is that open for interpretation disease I guess palms is not harmful to humans <laughs> but has wiped out entire growing regions in New South Wales in recent years local stock movements are banned and New South Wales and South Australia halted all Tasmanian oyster spat imports Tasmania supplies 90% of Australia's Pacific oyster spat Oyster Tasmania CEO Neil Stump said the new confirmed case of palms at Pipe Clay Lagoon is at one lease and is expected to spread to the other oyster areas nearby. Palms. Large die off of shad attracts rare seabirds. Record number of fish migrated up the Snake River this year. Most of them are dead juveniles. A shad is plucked by a bird from the lower monumental dam pool and dropped lies along the Snake River in the Walls Walls County. A large die off of an unglamorous fish have attracted rare visitors to a Snake River dam pool. The demise of hundreds of American shad described by wildlife officials as the Rodney Dangerfield for the respect they don't get attracted huge numbers of birds to the lower Snake River to dine on the dead and dying fish. Among them were gulls, rarely or never seen, seen in this area before. Mike Denny, an avid birder and past president of the Blue Mountain Audubon Society, said he's never seen anything like this number of dead fish, as well as the flocks flying to feast on them. On a field trip to the Lower Monumental Dam a few weeks ago, Denny said he and others observed flocks of gulls, numbering the thousands, made up of at least ten different species. That number of different gall species is unheard of in the interior of the Pacific Northwest. That number of different gall species is unheard of in the interior of the Pacific Northwest, he said. Among the visitors was a slatty bat gall, a bird native to Asia, 
and not expected to be seen anywhere east of the Cascades. Its appearance was the first recorded sighting of the bird in eastern Washington, Denny said. Two other super rare visitors were a group of lesser black bat galls, a Eurasian species, and another Glaucius gall. The Glaucius is normally found in the Arctic and is the largest gall in the world with a wingspan that can reach up to 64 inches. Other bird species snapping up on the bounty of shad were flocks of great egrets, the largest winter concentration we've ever seen on the Snake River. There were also loads of mallards, common golden-eyed ducks, great blue herons, and double-crested cormorants. Then he said fishermen he's talked with began noticing the shad die off in late November. He said he saw what appeared to be thousands of the fish in the area between Lower Monumental Dam and Ice Harbor Dam. Jeremy Trump, a fish biologist with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, confirmed there has been a die-off of shad and said it consisted mostly of juvenile fish. He said the exact cause has not been determined. However, it could be weather and temperature related. Then he also speculated the hot summer played a role, causing more of the juvenile shad to swim upriver, seeking cooler water. As the seasons changed, the larger than normal population then exhausted its food supply, leading many to die of starvation. Subscribe to our channel so our latest clips always come directly to you. Also, check out our playlist and be sure to like and share our videos with your friends. So have fun and thank you for spreading the love.